I'm having an amazing time playing Warzone Mobile. For me, it seems to run incredibly well. I've been having a ton of good games. I think my kill death is up to 16 now, which is absolutely insane for me. And I've just been having the best time with it. But I know lots of other people have been having lots of problems trying to get it set up, trying to get it working right. So I thought what I'd do in this video was just take you through how I'm playing the game, how I've got the entire thing set up, the in-game settings, and the hardware I'm using, so hopefully you can have as much fun as I am. First of all, let's start with the phone I'm using. It's the ROG Phone 8. Asus sent me one of these for free, so a massive thank you to Asus, and it is absolutely awesome. It is powered by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 mobile platform. It's got an AMOLED screen, 6.78 inches, 2,500 nits peak brightness, and kind of surprising for a gaming phone, it's even got an awesome camera with a six axis hybrid gimbal stabilizer, which basically means when you're filming, it'll keep everything steady. But let's talk about how the phone is for gaming. So it's got a few hardware features that I really like, like it has two USB ports, one on the bottom and one on the side. So if you're holding it on its side, the cable is kind of going vertically down, which is quite nice. And then it also has two air triggers on the top that are like shoulder buttons that you can program to do different things. So you could have it as like jumping and crouching or aiming and shooting. It also has a headphone jack, which is a bit of a rarity in this day and age. But if I load up the game, you can see the other really fancy thing this phone does. So as I load it up, you'll see a couple of things at the bottom there say game engine speeding up and then no calls is off, game engines optimized, all of that stuff. And that's because the ROG Phone 8 comes with this special software that I can just swipe in from the top left and get this up. And you can basically control loads of things about how the phone is handling your game just from this quick menu. Sounds a bit like a gimmick, but it's actually super useful. So you can check the CPU and GPU usage. You can do things like making sure you get no calls or block navigation so you can't accidentally swipe off the game. You can also choose what the air triggers do. You can key map stuff. So if you've got extra buttons on your controller, maybe like back paddles, you could assign that to do some sort of thing that you would normally have to touch the screen to do, which is super useful in some games. Thankfully, Warzone Mobile has pretty good controller support, so you don't really need to do that too much, but it might be useful if you're using an unusual controller. And then you can also do things like locking the touch screen if you don't want to use that, adding a crosshair to the screen, recording, all of that stuff. I found this super useful. Also, in Warzone Mobile, just with this specific phone, the ROG Phone 8, if I go into the settings, you can see it immediately defaults to high visual quality, and it gives you the option of high or mid. So let's talk about the settings for Warzone Mobile. I'll go into the hardware setup in a second, but this is how I've set up the game. And I think this is quite important because I think this is where a lot of people are going wrong. When I've heard people saying that the game's got really terrible performance, really terrible frame rate, I think people are being a bit too ambitious with this menu. So like I said, this is the settings that I'm using for the ROG Phone 8, but visual quality I've left on high. If you've got an Apple device, one of the latest Apple devices, you might have Peak available, but that's actually kind of an experimental mode. The developers were talking about this at the Q&A, that that's kind of almost an experiment to see how far they can push the phone. I wouldn't expect good performance with that. On my phone, I've got a choice of high and mid. I can put it down to mid and get a slightly smoother frame rate. Well, actually quite a lot smoother frame rate, but it looks quite blurry and I find it quite hard to see enemies with that. So I prefer to have it high and just accept that the frame rate won't be quite as good. Um, you can choose optimization for battery or frame rate. I've got it plugged in all the time, so I just leave it on frame rate. The high res asset streaming thing doesn't matter because that's on mobile data and I'm always on Wi-Fi. Max frame rate, I've left at 60. And then field of view is an interesting one. I think lots of people have managed to kind of mess up the game for themselves by turning this up just instinctively because they're used to playing Warzone at like a high field of view because they think, okay, that's obviously better. You can see more people. It does mean that the phone is having to render more of the game world. Again, at the Q&A, the developers talked about this, that if you turn the field of Europe, you have to accept that the phone will be working harder. And unlike a console or a PC, this is actually having a much bigger impact on the phones, at least right now. So I would strongly suggest you leave the field of view at its default. Or even, if you're struggling for frames, maybe turn it down a tiny bit. I've been doing really well in the game. I haven't had any trouble so far. I can actually show you my stats while I'm doing this. Um, so if I go into my stats, my combat record, 
you can see there with these settings i've got a kill death ratio of 15.6 um, with 21 games played and 16 wins so I've only lost five games that's pretty that's pretty good I'd say you know don't want to toot my own horn too much but that's pretty good and that's with the field of view just set to 80 so I wouldn't mess with it too much now while we're looking at the phone menu I'll also show you how I've set up the HUD this is quite a nice easy thing I've seen lots of people going bananas with the HUDs and doing these cool custom ones because it does that you generate a code that then you can share your HUD with people but I don't think you actually need to do that if you just go into customize HUD and then go down here to HUD preset in the bottom right then if you scroll all the way to the right there's one called default controller that shoves everything that you're not using if you're using a controller off to the sides and then you can just kind of keep that and that's been fine for me so again you'll see pretty much everything that I've recorded that you've got in this video you will see i am using that i'm using that setup i haven't customized anything else if you wanted to you obviously could shove stuff more to the sides but if you're playing on a phone where the aspect ratio is quite long like i am i haven't found that it really gets in the way at all and it's still nice being able to have some of the information up on the screen so that's been pretty good for me right let's talk a little bit about hardware so here you can see how I've got it set up. So this is my phone, it's just on a cheap tripod from Amazon. And then behind it, you can see my gaming PC that's currently running OBS, and that's where I record all of the footage. And you can see there it is mirroring what's happening on the screen, although there is a little bit of a delay, and I'll talk about how to get around that while you're playing in a second. And then I have my streaming PC where I have OBS picking up that as well. So the way this is all set up, on my phone, I have a power cable going into the USB port there. You don't actually need to have two USB ports on your phone. That's not going to be important because the other USB-C cable that's going into the other port is going down to this thing, which is a USB-C hub that I bought off Amazon. It cost about £34. They aren't sponsoring me or anything like that. But there's a bunch of different ones that all do the same thing. It basically just connects to the USB-C on your phone. And then it has a bunch of different IOs. So you can see that it's got SD cards, USB slots. It's got a USB-C there that you could use for power if you wanted to. And then it's got HDMI and AUX, which I use. And then it even actually has an Ethernet-like port there that you could use to wire it in. Now, the main thing I use this for is, first of all, for the AUX, for the audio. This is so I can get audio out without any delay or anything like that. So it goes from there over here into a ground noise loop isolator. These are pretty cheap, but they're useful to get rid of electrical hum on lines. And then that goes into line in on my computer. And then you can see if I look over OBS line in, you can see there's the music from the game that's going up there. So I've got the audio and I can control it separately from the HDMI uh, video signal. Then the HDMI cable that's going from the USB hub and in my case that's actually going to a capture card so you can see it back there that's my Elgato 4KX capture card then the HDMI from that is going through to the pass-through to my monitor so while I'm capturing from the USB from the capture card and that's how I record everything that's how I'm recording all the gameplay you see in this video oh, sorry my fingers got in a shot there if I just switch my monitor over to HDMI I can use the pass through and then it'll take a second to sort of initialize but now you can see there that is my phone screen and there is no delay at all so that is happening instantly and I actually tend to play looking at my monitor so I've got it on a nice shiny 4k monitor obviously it's a bit blurry because it's just the phone resolution blown up onto a big screen but it looks pretty good I would say now if you just want to have what's on your phone on a monitor, you don't need the capture card. You could just go straight from your phone to a USB-C hub, something like this, and then plug HDMI into that straight into your monitor. So then you could play it on a nice big screen. Now I can imagine there's some of you sitting there saying, why are you bothering with all of this hardware? You could just do this by screen sharing, or you could just do it by emulating the game and playing it on PC. But there's some pretty good reasons not to do that. First of all, with emulation, this hasn't been confirmed, but there's been reports, there's been rumours that people are getting account bans by playing the game on an emulator. I think this is probably a good move from Activision if it's true, because obviously it makes it a lot harder to cheat in the game if people can't use emulators. And I personally wouldn't risk it at all. Plus, when I was getting ready for Warzone Mobile, I did try out a bunch of emulators with Call of Duty Mobile, and they were terrible. 
like there was always a fairly horrible amount of lag and delay there was a bunch of crashing a bunch of graphical problems i personally just don't think it's worth emulating and like i said if there's a risk that you could get your account banned i definitely wouldn't do it so why shouldn't you use screen sharing apps in my experience there isn't a good way to run a screen sharing app without there being at least some delay and when you're playing a game that's an absolute nightmare with the setup i've shown you in this video i can't detect any extra input lag or delay with video compared to just playing it using a controller on my phone it just seems to be super snappy it just seems to work and the fact that i've been doing quite well in the game you know i've won i think every game except for maybe five at this point i think i've played 21 games and won 16 of them the fact that i've won that many games is kind of testament to the fact yes this is working really well any screen sharing app is going to include some kind of delay if you're streaming and recording it also tends to do some weird stuff with the audio where maybe the audio is a little bit delayed maybe the delay changes over time it just seemed like a nightmare and the other big problem is that screen sharing app running on your phone is just adding more work for your phone to do it's going to make it so your phone performs worse and since this game is quite demanding on a phone anyway you don't really want something else running that's going to use up many resources like that's absolutely terrible for the performance of your game so i personally don't think screen sharing apps are a good solution for it out of all the ones i tried again with call of duty mobile when i was getting ready for this i couldn't find one that was working seamlessly so i hope this video helped if it did let me know in the comments below don't forget to like subscribe i've been streaming an absolute bunch of warzone mobile at the moment just because i'm having such a good time of it and i'm going to be playing a load more in future so hopefully i'll see you then goodbye